links to the slave trade. The royal family's links to slavery began during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. The crown and the royal family was deeply involved in the slave trade and making money off the slave trade. Charles II granted a charter to the royal adventurers originally, and they were then reconstituted as the Royal African Company to deal directly in enslaved Africans and to sell them in the New World, but primarily to uh, the colonies in the Caribbean and mainland North America. This was uh, one of the greatest atrocities uh, in human history, and those who suffered uh, in this atrocity are persons from the region, a lot of persons from the Caribbean region. And that suffering was not only immense, it was uh, generational. And, uh, and a lot of wealth was derived from the suffering, a lot of benefits was derived from the suffering. But the brands that were used on the bodies of enslaved people featured the name of monarchs. So for example, the Duke of York, one of the brands that was used by the Royal African Company um, with the letters DY, and this was actually instructed to be put onto the bodies of enslaved people. So they are, are making it very clear that the royal family is involved, that the royal family supports the slave trade, and that actually because the royal family supports this is a good investment. This is a safe investment. This was seen as uh, the way to build an empire, but also as a way to convert Africans to Christianity. That was the primary argument that was made at the time. So the crown saw itself as a civilizing, Christianizing force that, yes, they were profiting, and yes, they were supplying laborers to the colonies, but they also saw themselves as on the right side because they were expanding and civilizing the world. The Wise African chiefs have seen the tremendous changes in Nairobi to which the princess herself referred in her speech. The contrast we see today is a striking tribute to the men and women of all races who have made it a great center of commerce and finance the crossroads of East Africa, the capital of your colony, and the seat of the East Africa High Commission. So of course that family has benefited from enslavement, um, and so has many institutions in this country, whether it's the railways, the roads, the banks, HSBC, Barclays, and the enslavers were compensated when slavery was ended, and the compensation didn't stop getting paid until 2015, so people like me, were paying actually for compensation for the enslavers. But the people who were enslaved were never compensated. We never even got an apology. By the 1790s, there's a growing groundswell of support for abolition in Britain. But the royal family is deeply opposed to the abolition of the slave trade. George III did not come out publicly and say that he was against the slave trade, but he made it very clear to his ministers that he would not support abolition as a cabinet measure. So this was something that the public knew, that the royal family was against abolition, that the royal family believed that the slave trade was crucial to maintaining Britain's wealth and power and its imperial interests. Repairing that damage is something that both Prince Charles and Prince William have tried to do in recent years. With some of the strongest words yet from members of the royal family when it comes to links to slavery, and some have seen it as a real.